Uh, we're going to be focusing on 2012 as well as mentioning uh, where the new Dynamics 265 for operations uh, kind of differs from the 2012 model. Um, my name is Alex Meyer. I'm the director of AX development at FastPath. Uh, we specialize in security automated and compliance um, for ERP solutions. Um, and my email is meyer at gofastpath.com. So the agenda for today, uh, what we're going to be looking at is the security model within AX. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, the reporting functionality that you can get out of AX uh, natively, um, looking at administrative access and what that means uh, for your security, um, segregation of duties, uh, module or utility within AX, uh, audit trails, uh, workflows within AX, uh, lifecycle services, uh, and then uh, AX licensing. Uh, and I guess before we begin, uh, Adam, can we go ahead and, and run those two polls real quick? I just want to get a, an idea of um, what versions of AX people are using as well as their roles within the, uh, the company. Sure, itself. absolutely. Yep. So, so I'll open those so, polls right now. Okay. So uh, obviously the first poll is um, asking what versions of, of AX you're uh, currently using, uh, and then the second poll uh, would be what position you are within your company to kind of get an idea for that. So. In a few seconds So here. while we're waiting, oh, I'm sorry. Um, no. I have the results of the first poll. Why don't I read okay. those to you? Um, yep. While people are finishing up, uh, so uh, what version of AX are you currently using? Five percent are on AX 4.0, um, eleven percent are on AX 2012 R2, sixteen percent are on AX 2012 R3, um, and then Dynamics 365 for operations or AX 7 is eleven percent. Um, and let me get the results for this other poll as well. Be two seconds. Um, so what position are you currently in in your organization? Um, IT, 57%. Um, audit, 5%. Okay. And then 38% uh, didn't answer. Okay. Uh, that's great. So uh, we kind of have a wide range of, of AX versions. Um, it seems like mostly IT staff. So that's good to know. Uh, thank you, everyone, for doing that. Um, so jumping in, um, you know, what are co some common uh, security challenges uh, that most organizations face is NAX. Um, I think so access to security is a world priority for the project team. Uh, I think everyone here can relate to when you're implementing or upgrading an ERP system, that security is definitely a world priority. Um, if a user comes to you and says that they need permissions X, Y, and Z, it's very easy to just give that to them without thinking through the ramifications of that from a segregation duties perspective. Uh, the main focus normally um, when going through a project is user productivity instead of validating if a user should have that access. Um, everyone is a science system administrator. Again, this is easy to fall into uh, if an IT or business process owners do not communicate about the security. The easy solution is for IT to give everyone sysadmin and they call it a day. Um, we actually had a client that day before their go live, they found out that they took system administrator away from a user, uh, they weren't able to see any of the customizations the client had done. Um, obviously, this is an extreme example, but it shows the importance of testing using the user's actual roles um, and, and not just relying on sysadmin. Uh, next is security is the domain of IT sysadmin um, users and not business process owners. Uh, this is a challenge we see in any environment. Um, as there normally is a barrier between IT and business process owners, and it makes for challenging security problems. Uh, IT has the ability to assign rights to users, but has no idea if the user should have those rights or what problems giving the user those rights would entail. Business process owners know what users need rights, but do not have the ability or understanding to assign those correct rights to the user. In successful implementations that we've seen, the IT team and business process owners need to work together to achieve a successful security implementation. Uh, expensive customizations place of security. Um, instead of 
you know, addressing security directly, companies sometimes try to apply complex customizations to disable or enable certain features uh, within AX. This can add tremendous complexity to your environment as well as incur performance that within AX. Uh, no consideration for segregation duties. Uh, during the initial design of security, a few companies keep segregation duties principles in mind. They look at what each user needs for, or role needs uh, and go from there. It's much easier to design your initial security setup with segregation of duties in mind than trying to go back after the fact and add those ideas in. Process control is not part of the design. Uh, during the design process of security controls for known segregation of duties issues are not designed or documented. Controls can be anything from workflows to do approvals to out of the pay at the bank. Basically anything that you can point to that will mitigate the risk of segregation of duties conflict. Um, dilution of go live security. Uh, it is important not only to set up your security correctly in the implementation, but to ensure that the same design is followed throughout the entire implementation lifecycle. It is very easy for permission creep to occur where a user just accumulate permissions and user's access is not reassessed to assure more. Uh, and then inability to report on current security setup. Um, AX makes it very difficult to get an overview report on user security out of the box. Uh, reports can be made either at the SQL level or programmatically within AX. So if we look at the security model uh, within AX, um, this is just a, a graphical representation of it, but you can see that it's hierarchy based, um, where users are assigned roles, Roles are assigned to duties or privileges, and then um, the actual securable objects are assigned to uh, those privileges. Um, so uh, each security layer in AX is just a collection of objects below that layer. So roles being made up of a collection of duties, duties being made up of a collection of privileges, and privileges being made up of a collection of securable objects. Uh, you'll notice that, you, that privileges can be assigned to duties to the roles, and then this uh, allows for a very fine-grained approach when designing your security. Uh, so we kind of covered that the first point about the, the hierarchy-based um, security setup. Um, so override at a role is a privilege level. Uh, a role override is when a role is assigned a table permission directly without having that permission to a duty or privilege first. A privilege override is when a privilege is assigned a table permission directly without that permission going through a menu item. So if you're assigning table well security directly to either a privilege or a role, that's considered, considered a, uh, an override permission. Uh, field level security, so not only can you assign tables to roles and privileges, but you can actually assign fields on those levels, fields on those tables to uh, roles and privileges. Uh, automatic role assignment. Um, during the role assignment process of NAX, you can set up rules to automatically assign roles to a user if certain condition, conditions are met. Uh, these rules are set up by simple uh, SQL queries. Um, and you test and deploy that code. So you want to make sure that your initial security changes are done in a test environment and then push to production um, once you're satisfied with those, just the same way you do with code. Uh, for user authentication, uh, users in AX are 80 users, so it uses the Windows authentication as its authentication mechan mechanism. Uh, assigning users by organization, so by default of an AX, uh, when you assign a role to a user, uh, that user gets that role across all companies or legal entities, uh, but you do have the ability to go in and limit that user role assignment to specific companies or legal entities as well. And then uh, Active Directory groups, so you can create a group in Active Directory and uh, put all of the, the users that fit that particular group in it and then go into AX and assign that group uh, roles just as if it were a user. So if you have all of your AP clerks in an AD group, you can go into AX and um, set up an AD, an 
AP clerk um, uh, the group um, inside of AX um, and inside the, the roles of that those user's name. So then any time any, any user gets placed in that uh, AP AD, uh, group, they'll automatically get those roles. Um, extensible data security policies or XPS policies allow developers and administrators to block or limit access to a subset of data roles. Um, basically, that means that even though if a user has access to a particular object in an AX, you can still limit down um, what they can see or what they can, um, the types of, of data that they can see. And for those that are more technical, it's roughly similar to a SQL where statement. So if we look at uh, security reporting um, and some of the ideas you want to have around that, um, you don't want to just set it and forget it. You know, as roles, duties, and privileges, uh, user, user assignments uh, change, you need to make sure that periodic access reviews are taking place to validate the changes made to your security. Uh, not doing periodic reviews leaves you open to security issues such as permission group in the future. Uh, you want to take a risk-based approach to reviews. So not every permission within AX is important or critical when reviewing access. Uh, you want to limit down your scope to critical areas when doing reviews. Uh, business process owners should review access. Um, as I kind of mentioned previously, IT doesn't know whether a user should have a particular access or not. The business process owners should be involved in access reviews to validate results. Uh, monitor system administrator access. Obviously very important. Uh, because of the access this role gives the user, but very easy to forget, especially if the user is granted this permission in a firefighter situation where they need to fix something ASAP, uh, we need to ensure that you have a firm command of, of this role at all times. Um, and update processes, rules, and matrices. You know, as security changes, you want to make sure to update your processes, rules, and security matrices to correspond to your current security. So uh, you want to make sure that all of those match what your, your current security looks like. Um, continuing on with security reporting, um, you know, if an auditor uh, came to you tomorrow and asked which users have access to a particular object or where users have access in general, could you give that to them? Um, and if you're using out-of-the-box reporting within AX, uh, that's very hard. Uh, because the next point, the no standard user reports. Um, out of the box, there's no standard user um, access reports out of AX. Um, one of the, the tools that we uh, recommend that clients use to help with that is that security development tool. Uh, it's a tool directly um, designed and uh, given out by Microsoft. It's technically still in beta. Um, but it's been so for four years. Um, but it basically allows for the easy creation and maintenance of security. Um, the tool displays entry point permissions for a given role, duty, or privilege. You can also use it to record business process flows and identify the entry points that are used. Um, in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Operations, the security development tool is no longer available as a separate application. However, most of the functionality is still available on the records themselves instead of being a separate module or application. Um, the next bullet point, inquiry doesn't equal inquiry. Uh, basically what that means is that even if a role due to your privilege has inquiry in the title, it doesn't mean that that role due to your privilege um, does not allow you to modify a record. So it's very important to go in and actually uh, review what each um, role due to your privilege can do and not just rely on the name to tell you well, that's an inquiry rule, so it can't uh, modify the data. Uh, the AOT um, is also available as the application object tree. It contains all the definitions of elements that are used to build Microsoft Dynamics AX, such as classes, tables, and forms. Uh, this is where all development is done within AX 2012. In Dynamics 365, this is the move to Visual Studio. Um, customer reports. So, um, you know, I, I, we mentioned earlier that there are no out-of-the-box reports, but you can develop custom reports for user access. Um, it's going to require uh, a developer to either create those in um, AX programmatically using X++ code, 
or you can go directly to SQL and write SQL queries. Um, one of the easiest ones that we kind of mentioned to um, users is uh, if they're just starting out, you can use the security user role table uh, to get a user role assignment um, report very easily as, as that table uh, contains the user role matching. So I uh, just wanted to show, for those who haven't seen it, what the security development tool looks like in AX2012 here. So you can see we're looking at the accountant role here. Uh, we're looking at um, the vendor menu item displays that they have access to. And you can see that in the access level, uh, you can actually see what um, access the account role has to each entry point. So it's, it's a very um, verbose tool, but it gives you um, all the different layers that you're looking for um, to show where the, this role has that, has that access. Uh, and I did want to show that this was taken from Dynamics 365. Um, this is the same uh, kind of reporting that you've seen before. Again, looking at the accountant role, it'll show you the, the several duty privilege um, the hierarchy that we were talking about earlier and then where it has access. Um, and then uh, to, to what object, and then the read, update, create, uh, and delete, and whether or not those are um, granted or not. So administrative access. Um, we're, when we're talking about administrative access, we're talking about the system administrator role, uh, which is a, a programmatic role, which means that um, it's not visible um, to be edited within um, AX. So it can't be modified from the front end or through the AOT. Um, the system administrator role is required for AOT access um, because of the uh, functionality that the AOT offers. Um, that makes sense. It's also required for code deployments. And again, because of what you, you're able to do through code deployments, that makes sense. So um, if you uh, have developers that are going to be developing an AX, they're going to be system admin, or anybody that pushes code is also going to be that. So if we uh, continue on to segregation of duties, um, the, the idea of segregation of duties, the, the first thing that comes to mind is you want to have a methodology. And what we mean there is you want to have an auditing methodology that fits your environment. Um, there's no wrong choice, um, but find uh, an auditing methodology that works for you and make sure you stick with it. Um, building rules. Um, you have the, uh, in AX you have to build the rules. Um, let's say if the user has access to do two or more actions within AX, then that's considered a conflict. Um, we do have an ISACA-based rule set that we can provide. These rules will be done at what is called the business process level, which is a group of permissions that allow you to perform an action within AX. Um, when looking at segregation of duties, you want to balance um, preventing a user uh, from doing a certain task versus productivity. So if you take away um, all of the access that uh, causes segregation of duty conflicts uh, from a user, you can very easily affect their productivity. So they're not able to do anything. So you want to be able uh, to make sure that you balance those between each other. Uh, don't forget about process controls. Um, you know, one, one thing we tell clients is that it's okay to have user rule conflicts, um, but you want to be sure that you have controls for each of those um, user conflicts that you do have. You know, you want to try to limit down the um, number of conflicts as much as you can, but you do have process controls for those conflicts that are unavoidable. Uh, and then the overall goal is to blend uh, of security and control. So, like I mentioned, you won't be able to get rid of every SRD conflict in your environment but you should have some sort of preventative, preventative control for those who you can't get rid of. So there is a segregation of duties feature uh, within AX2012. Um, it sits in the system administrator portion of AX. Uh, it is a preventative, it provides preventative controls. So preventative control is just a process that helps mitigate a potential risk. Uh, there are no standard rules with this tool. So there's no out-of-the-box rule set uh, to client. So all rules must be built by the client from the ground up. 
uh, analysis for the segregation duties um, is done at a duty level. So the rule set, uh, you would build a combination of duties that are in conflict. So if the user has access to duty one and duty two, that would be considered a conflict. Um, with this analysis, there are a number of, of gaps that you can run into. Uh, the first being security overrides. You know, if your uh, if permissions are assigned directly to the role, then the SOD tool will not be able to see these and will be considered it would not be considered in this analysis. So if you're assigning table permissions directly to the role and bypassing that duty level, um, it won't take those up. Uh, privilege role assignment kind of follows the same thing. If you're assigning privileges directly to a role and bypassing the duty level, um, the SOD tool won't be able to pick those up. And finally, the security inherited by, uh, from AD groups. If you're assigning roles to a user through the AD groups, the SOD tool does not take that into account. Um, any inherited roles, so these will not show up in the analysis. So those are three kind of big areas that we'd like to point out. Um, if you're going to use the, um, the segregation of duties tool uh, from AX. Uh, and so here's what the, the SOG tool from AX is going to look like. So you can see that you have uh, a name of the, the segregation of duty, uh, the first duty, and the second duty. Uh, so basically you're looking at, in this case, maintain vendor master and maintain bank accounts. So if you have access to both of those duties at a public view level, it's going to mark that as a conflict. Um, and it has a severity uh, level that you can set, as well as a security risk, which basically describes why this is a conflict. Um, and so this is what it looks like in Dynamics 265. Again, you have the same goals, um, or the same columns that you uh, saw in AX2012. Um, one additional feature that they added is that you can provide a mitigation for that conflict um, as well. So you can say there's a positive pay using dual approvals, um, what have you there. So uh, that's one change from 2012. So uh, moving on to audit trails. Um, again, just like with security access, you want to take a risk-based approach. So you don't want to go into AX and you want to be tracking um, every field within AX. You want to limit down where you're tracking to just the, the high-risk areas of your system um, that you designate. Um, and if you do that, uh, you're going to be able to help on a number of levels. Um, if you go down to the field level uh, on the table, instead of tracking the entire table uh, in AX, if you go down to the field level and say, these are the fields that I want to track, um, that will help you. Um, it will reduce uh, the performance hit within AX because you're tracking less data. And it will reduce the data storage requirements, um, again, uh, for the same reason. Uh, it will improve, improve reporting performance uh, because there's less data to go over um, in reporting then. And it improves the reviewer accuracy. So when a reviewer goes in and looks at these reports, they're not having to go through rooms and rooms of pay, uh, data trying to find the, the change they're looking for um, you know, to shrink that uh, data that you're reviewing. Um, they are much more uh, likely to, to be able to find what they're looking for in there. So AX does have an audit trail feature within it called the database log. Um, the database log tracks uh, the user the date and time that a change occurs, as well as the old and new values. Um, again, there are some limitations uh, around the database log. Um, it was initially designed as a debugging tool, uh, so it's not designed as an auditing tool, so the reporting around it and the design of it in general is from an IT perspective and not an auditor's perspective. Um, and there's also a number of uh, performance considerations if you turn database logging on, AX has to write row by row um, uh, when you make any transaction to the to the database. So if you're trying to batch up um, inserts, updates, or deletes, um, basically AX has to undo that and insert those one at a time. So you're going to lose uh, the performance that you're getting with those. Um, and 
It also only tracks changes inside of AX. So if the user is making changes directly in SQL or from a third-party application, um, you're not going to uh, see those those changes. You're only going to see the changes that occur within uh, AX. Um, if uh, if you're looking at uh, changes made in the database, looking at it through SQL Profiler or um, another database tracking tool, um, you're going to see that every change that's coming across has the AOS service account. Um, that's because of how AX works. Um, it writes to the database using one account. So um, just using SQL Profiler will tell you, you know, where changes are occurring, but it won't let really you know who the actual user is in the front end that's making that change. Um, and then code changes and admin changes are, are very difficult to, to track with the database log. So you want to make sure that you have some um, alternative method uh, or, or control around um, how you're going to validate those changes um, in the system. And finally, you want to make sure that you maintain that audit data. So you want to be sure to manage the data that is captured as lar large amounts of data can have a negative performance impact. Uh, in AX. You want to make sure that you keep that audit data um, relatively small um, so it doesn't affect the performance. So this is what the database log setup uh, looks like in AX 2012. Uh, you can see here we went to uh, the vendors uh, table here. Uh, you can basically come in and say I want to track vendors and then certain fields uh, that you want to track. And then on the next screen, you can choose what action for each of those fields you want to track. So uh, inserts, updates, or deletes. Um, this is what this looks, the, the same functionality looks like in Dynamics 365. Again, you can come in and see you want to track vendors um, in the uh, fields you want to track. And then again, you can come in and, and say whether you, whether you want to track inserts, updates, or deletes for each of those uh, fields that you're tracking. Uh, as well, along with uh, just the database setup, there's also uh, reporting you can and inquiries you can do into the database log. So um, if you go into um, any of the track data, you're going to be able to see um, the date and time that the change occurred, the change type, as well as the before and after values for each of those um, changes. Uh, and this is what it looks like in Dynamics 365. Pretty similar in that regard. <coughs> uh, workflows within AX. Uh, so a workflow is a process uh, within AX that determines the flow of a request through the AX system. Uh, workflows uh, provide a preventative control that you can use while doing your segregation of duties. So um, if you have conflicts, uh, user conflicts in your segregation of duties, you can could use a workflow as the mitigate control for that conflict. Um, before we go into this, I want to say that I am not a workflow expert, um, and so if you have in-depth questions about how workflows um, operate, uh, there are plenty of classes and tutorials you can find online to help develop workflows in your environment. Um, but the workflow editor, uh, or the, the workflow uh, functionality within AX, is powerful and flexible, so you can create very complex uh, workflows. Uh, but it also allows you to, um, you know, make make changes very easily to those workflows. So it's also uh, very flexible. Um, developing a workflow will require a developer and some workflow expertise. So um, you're going to need somebody that knows um, how to uh, write code with NAX as well as the workflow side. Um, the workflow editor. Within AX is a graphical um, interface that you can see the workflow itself, so you can see all the different stages and the different points uh, within the workflow. Um, most of the time, uh, what we see is the workflow being used for approvals uh, around journal uh, entries and uh, POs. Um, and the reason for that is are these POs are obviously the high financial uh, risk um, and, and Putting approvals around these forces another pair of eyes to view each transaction uh, before it's processed. 
Uh, and finally, the reporting and, and tracking details. So uh, the tracking details allow you to look into each workflow and see who approved or executed each step and any details that they provided um, for, for those steps. So if we look at the workflow editor within AX2012, uh, obviously this is a, a very simple workflow, uh, but you can see that you can see where the workflow starts, um, each step of the workflow, and then where the workflow ends. Uh, so this is the, the graphical um, side of it, so you can actually see each step um, as, it, as it processes. And then the, the tracking details, um, if you look in here, uh, you're going to be able to see each uh, each step of the workflow is broken out. Um, and if you click on one of those steps over on the right-hand side, you're going to be able to see who approved that action, any comments that they provided, as well as the date and time that that action was approved. So you're going to have uh, a log of, of um, any approvals that occurred for the workflow. Uh, Lifecycle services is a, another um, is a web-based uh, platform that Microsoft provides for maintaining um, your AX environment. Uh, it is available in 2012, and it takes a much bigger role in Dynamics 365. Uh, but in the lifecycle services, uh, there are a couple of, of features you can use um, to, uh, to help you out. The business pro process modeler, so if you want to go in um, to within, uh, basically you can go in and create your business processes uh, in the, the, the modeler itself, um, and then you can see how assigning those to users will affect their access or access. Uh, segregation of users. So um, it also helps with documentation so you can show um, you know what bits of process you have in your environment. Uh, the task recorder um, is a tool within AX that allows you to perform a business process uh, and then you're uh, through the UI so you can actually click through on the UI and then you're able to see the roles, duties, and privileges that are required to do that business process. So um, if you have a user that you know needs the ability to do a certain task on AX, uh, you can turn on the task recorder, go click through there, and be able to see um, the, the permissions that that user needs to, to perform that. Uh, and the license sizing estimator uh, is a process that can give you an idea of the number of licenses you'll need based on the goals uh, you assign to a user. Uh, I will say that this feature um, only works with out-of-the-box roles, so if you're assigning custom roles, all you have to use a different method. But it is out there in Lifecycle Services. Uh, with Dynamics 365, for those that are on it or moving to it, um, the LCS um, module takes a much bigger role um, than it did with AX2012, as this is the um, place where you can actually manage and deploy new AX instances, um, as well as uh, a landing spot for a bunch of the, the same stuff from uh, AX2012. Um, but you can see here that we have a couple of AX7 instances pushed out there, and we can, we can manage all of that through um, the LCS module and Dynamics 365. So licensing within AX. Um, with AX2012, uh, licenses are no longer concurrent like they were in AX2009, uh, which means that each user must be assigned a license of a particular type to be able to access the system. Um, and there are a number of different um, types of licenses. So if we look at the user, the client access licensing here, um, moving from uh, the most uh, aggressive to the least of the enterprise uh, license user, the functional user, which is no longer available in Dynamics 365, the task user, and the self-service. So um, basically those go from uh, most aggressive or expensive down to the least in that regard. Uh, a user's license is determined by menu item access. So a user's license type is determined by the menu items they have access to. Each menu item 
Uh, MAX has two license types assigned to it, one for viewing the menu item and one for retaining the menu item. Uh, it only takes one access to a particular license level for that user to be assigned that license type. For example, if a user has just one menu item at the enterprise license level, that user requires an enterprise license. So each uh, menu item has two different levels. That view um, level is obviously the user can't make any changes to it. They can only read from the menu item and maintain uh, is if the user can modify the menu item in any way. So insert update between would be maintain level. Uh, and then external users do not require a license. So if the user as an external user uh, type, they do not require any of the licenses above. I did want to put one slide in here about the FastPath products. Uh, at FastPath, we provide security auditing and compliance uh, for across the dynamic space. So AXGP, NAV, SL, CRM, um, as well as web ERPs, uh, NetSuite Intact, uh, Salesforce. Uh, but we're, we have um, a number of different tools that help um, with the kind of reporting that we talked about today, um, you know, uh, where users are getting access, how they're getting that access, and what they're doing with that access. So, um, as well as uh, allowing for identity management so you can have a workflow plot process around the user creation. Um, so a lot of the shortcomings that we talked about in AX uh, throughout the, the presentation today, uh, we um, provide either support or reporting around those um, to help give you a, a clear picture of that. Uh, we also come um, look at this from a, an auditor's perspective. Um, we have a number of auditors on staff, um, and they help drive the product creation as well as telling us what reports they need. So um, if you guys have questions about uh, our offerings, you can either reach out directly to me um, or to our support staff at supportablefastpath.com or our sales team at salesablefastpath.com. And with that, uh, I'll go ahead and take any questions that anybody has. Um, and my uh, uh, contact information is below. Um, you can feel free to reach out to me um, with any questions about AX security that you guys have. Great. Thanks, Alex. I just want to remind everybody that the uh, Q&A box is on the right-hand side of your screen, and um, we'll just give you a minute or so to kind of type in your questions. Um, as Alex mentioned, he'll uh, try to get to every one of them. Looks like we have a question that came in. Um, Alex, the first question is, should you try to create completely um, segregation of duties, conflict-free roles? Yeah. So. Um you know, we have some clients that come to us and, and they want to uh, create roles that don't have or, and have users that have no segregation duties conflicts. Um, and while that's, that's achievable, um, uh, it's not really realistic in the real world as, uh, you know, we're, we're balancing that productivity against um, a security uh, that we kind of talked about earlier. So. You want to try to limit down the number of state, uh, conflicts you do have, um, but uh, you, you don't have to have no conflicts in your system. Great. Um, another question, is it possible to use workflows in the production area? Uh, yeah, you, you can definitely use workflows in production, uh, in a production environment. Uh, I would obviously want to test those first in a, in a test environment um, and then move it to production, um, but it is definitely possible. Great. Thank you. Um, someone's asking a question about a product on the FastPath website. Uh, they said they can't find the product uh, for, quote, security setup in AX. What product name should I be looking for? Uh, so, for security setup, um, it would probably be closest to our Assure product. Um, you know, it's going to tell you where users have, have security, uh, where users have access in your environment, and then you can, you know, that would influence, obviously, how you set up security. 
um, in that regard. Let's see if any other questions come in. Um, actually, it looks like we do have another one. Is there any issue using the security development tool as it is still in beta? Uh, no. Um, uh, we, we feel pretty comfortable telling clients to use that. Um, Microsoft does is still labels that technically as in beta, um, but it, it has come out four years ago, so I'm not sure it's, if it's ever going to be released um, as a full production uh, tool, uh, but it is available. You can download it through LCS. Um, so it's, it's something that Microsoft provides. I just don't think they want to provide support for it, and so that's why they um, they've let him be done. Let's see if anybody has any more questions. We'll give people just a few more seconds to kind of collect their thoughts. All right, well, it looks like that's all the questions we have, so why don't we end there. Um, Alex, I'd like to thank you again for uh, joining us as a presenter. Um, that was a very no good problem. session, and I want to also Thank everybody for attending the session as well. Um, uh, we recorded the session, and we'll be sure to send out a link to the posted session uh, probably within the next uh, couple of days. And any questions, Alex's email is right on the screen, so feel free to contact him. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you all.